Hey guys, I just wanted to do a video about enumerators. Sometimes I see new ways of doing things in programming and it sounds complicated or I don't think I'll be able to get my head around it. Um, enumerators are not one of those things. Uh, they're really easy to use and to understand. And if you have a raise, um, which you probably do if you're making an RPG or, you know, probably most games actually, um, then enumerators become really useful, especially as your arrays grow with your game. Uh, the bigger your arrays and uh, the more you have of them, the more useful enumerators become. So what are enumerators? Um, if you do a Google search, uh, the first thing that comes up is a person employed in taking a census of the population. No, that's not what we mean by enumerator. Um, if we check out the Latin definition, it's actually recounting or reciting numbers or a numbered list. Um, and that's what enumerators are. In my own words, I'd say an enumerator is basically giving a name to a number. So if we take a look at the manual in GameMaker 2 for enumerators, it tells us that enumerators are global scope variables. What this means is you can access it from any other object. Uh, you don't have to make it you know, global in scope because it is already. Uh, say for example, if we look at one of my objects in a, a boxing game I've been working on, uh, we've got some enums here. Uh, if I try and reference physical in another object. Let's just uh, go to one quickly. If I type physical, then you'll notice it turns red and that means it's an enumerator. Uh, if you now press dot and then I think the first letter of my enum starts with E. That's my naming reference is E underscore. Then it shows you all of the enumerators that you have for that particular one and one good thing that's worth noting is um, I could have duplicate enumerators so I could I could copy age and weight class and put it into here and I could access uh, physical dot e age and it would reference this one and not this one. It's also worth noting that when you create enumerators like this, uh, the default function of them is to set them uh, as a number in order. So here red would be zero, orange one, yellow two, green three, etc., etc. But we, what you can also do is if you only want to have specific items uh, having an enumerator, you can set them like this. So you might want red to be the fifth one and green number 20. You don't have to create enumerators for every entry in your array, but I would strongly recommend you do for most things and I will explain why a little bit later on. So how will enumerators help you? Um, here is an example of 1D array um, that I might have been using in the past. Uh, I always, use, always used to number them like this and then uh, in comments put what they were. Uh, I think a lot of people still do this. Now what happens a month down the line if you want to add, change or delete some entries into this array? Say for example we want to add, we want to make number five into stomach stat. We've changed, we've added a new entry as number five and all these three are now going to change to six, seven, eight. Now it's not enough for me to do this. I've got to go into the code um, everywhere that I've referenced this array just, just to make sure that I'm still checking the right number. Because every time I've been checking toughness, it used to be number five, but now it's six. So any code I've got is going to be checking the stomach stat now, which is not what I want. But if you initialize your arrays like this,
So now that I've initialized the array using enumerators, it no longer matters whether I delete some of them or add a few more uh, because they're, they're always going to reference the same number from the enumerators. If we want to reorder, so say for example, I like to use for loops um, to maybe dis display part of an array. Um, all you need to do is reorder the enumerators in here. You don't need to change this bit. And it, it also means you don't have to go into all of your code to change every single example of every part of the array that's been changed. It saves so much time. And I kind of wish that I'd been using these three years ago. It would have it would have saved me a lot of time, definitely. And finally, if you were wondering how to apply this to a 2D array, uh, then this is an example for you. So for the first dimension, I've got monsters, uh, slime, bat, rat, which is here's the slime, here's the bat, here's the rat. And then for the second dimension, uh, we've got name, hit point and damage, um, and that's it. So again, it doesn't matter if you change the order of, of these or if you add new entries into them or add things in here. Uh, because we've initialized the array in this way, um, you no longer have to worry about any part of your code where you've used them. Uh, it, it's just so much better. Um, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. Um, I will catch you next time. Bye for now.